Hello, hello. Nice. Okay, then um, I'll just begin. I will not mumble about how my youth has been too soon captured into the mass cognitive dissonance. This illusion, once you learn how to scream from the top of your lungs as loudly as you can, a constant wish to do so appears. Daily, in a busy street, when you are petting your cat, while you stand in a line and your own temporality does not match the tempo of others or the tempo of life, in a matter of fact. Your materiality gets shattered because of this captured scream that you are willing to release but afraid to do so because of, you know, what others will think or do. As if you could suspect a reaction from your surroundings, an activation of dreamy minds floating somewhere in their own individualities. This is a feeling of resentment for others from yourself. And the scream gets shattered into countless particles within your body. And then it travels through your veins or meridians or limbic system or, or nothing you could control. It brings you pain, kicks you in a microscopic way on different places at odd times. Oh yeah, how you wish you would scream when you had a chance to do so. And then the scream, it didn't disintegrate yet when it was whole, a force, a potential, when you had a chance to release it. A kicking activity, an action you could take. Now powerless, it injects your body with a sensation that the time has passed, that it is too late, that we do not have time anymore to react, to change anything to battle this distraction within us, to tear the parchment where all rules and regulations and statements, lies and truths are written, to be able to take control. You know, I sometimes wish I could be a tree, just being. I presume that trees do not feel this scream inside them being slowly disintegrated. This current observation of time just slipping past our eyes. Rapid eye movement in an awakened state. state. Well, maybe not even awake, aware, just not asleep. As if you were on a fast train going nowhere, going somewhere. Not even following the train tracks. Just mindlessly moving into all directions. Like a snake in that old Nokia game crashing into your own tail and then the game is over only to be restarted again. Listen to this fine monophonic tune, you know it by heart. It tells you, it tells you that you lost one heart but you can continue living. The end might come sooner even. So pessimistic. But you know, this is not a sad story nor a depressing tale. It is just a thought process that is trying to is express that no matter how many lives you lose, there will be the next one, generated by some sort of a protocol, a scheme that we might not understand. Maybe, just maybe the snake in the old Nokia game just needs a bit of contact, a touch, and that is why it approaches itself so much, just a bit too much. So. Are we still in a daily hurry, in a constant acceleration of finding the meaning for all of this while the internally captured screen is controlling how we breathe? What would happen if we would sleep and release it? Maybe somebody would say, bless you, as if you would sneeze and um, no hard feelings at all. Full disclosure on our closeness. The distances determine proximity. It is about measuring time and activity as they are not stable factors of being, but a constantly changing parameters on a slider that does not know its 100%. Full optionality is permitted while facing determinism, the process of reduction meaningless impulses 
also must be categorized as a strategy to keep mind occupied. But as we do so, does relevancy really reveal itself? From hidden forms becoming stabilized in some fantasy that we can believe for a while, then the facts get dispersed and the true nature of things shines so bright we do not have courage to look at the source that is blinding us. Everybody has always said that if you look in the sun for too long, you will get blind. I still don't know if this is a myth. I do not have a wish too strong to risk my sight just to know, to be sure. Never trusting anybody so much as you can trust yourself is a decision that enables more chances of survival. Or does it? Surviving well is a term that comes into mind while we observe and partake in this world as we know it, changing so fast and unpredictably, and we cannot keep up with it. To know all, to be able to be knowledgeable and open-minded is a privilege and also a decision. To survive well as a middle-class Eastern European with the possibility of Austro-Hungarian emperor's blood in my veins, a bastard child of Franz Josef is my alleged ancestor. When we speak of privilege, we are roaming in this space of non-linearity, of decisions. I am not determined by the past of my genes, genealogy of my ancestors. It is reckless to believe that we as the privileged ones have no choice on how we decide to act upon our free will. Context decides sometimes. Context sometimes determines our ability to react, the responsibility that we must feel as well. There is always an arrow pointed at us as individuals, as communities, as humanity. Who holds the bow? The precision of the shot depends on how well we are trained in guiding the gaze, playing with the focus of the shooter. If, in the crucial moment, we can redirect the arrow for a millimeter, we might survive the blast. We might, might only get wounded and that fuels the wish to better oneself. Strategies of survival are arising from our genes. This embodied knowledge that was passed down from generations to us. We tend to ignore it. The possibility to refine your own assets somewhere in the sleeves of our skin, deeply embedded into every cell's DNA. To remember what was forgotten, Plato praised. A strategy of survival in this time is never a lonely project. It is a collective state of not knowing what will come and how to face it. Do you look into the eyes of the shooter, of the politician, of the surgeon, and hope that by the way you are looking at them, you could make them empathize, make them notice you are not different than, than them. That there is a common struggle to stay alive, to stay alive, to stay alive. I forget to breathe at crucial moments. I hurry when I should be slowing down. I am too slow when I am late. I forget how to speak when I am supposed to deliver speeches. I forgot, I forget that I have a body. I neglect my own passion. I want to breathe with full lungs in landscapes polluted by fog and fumes. I chain smoke when I feel that what I should be doing was meditational exercises. I forget about my expertise when I'm faced with others showing theirs. I eat shitty processed food and forget to water my plants. I'm trying to stay alive, but not only to stay alive, to be alive well, to feel to transcend the bare survival and enable myself to truly disobey sorrow as the leading, leading emotion of the everyday. To transcend the fear that I feel for the future of a little human and humanity. Of the normal, hardworking, jobless, hungry for erected sapiens. 
So the empathy that we are capable of nurturing is neglected because it brings sensations of the world inside of our very skin, inside of our capability of relating. It is never an easy job to feel, to be faced with our own emotion as well as emotion of another. Then we breathe it out, have coping mechanisms, try, try to stay calm and carry on, check where the exit signs of our situations glow, stay low, follow arrows that are facing us as if the real leaders of our own lives would be fear and globally induced anxiety that we so comfortably believe. In illusion, we smile while, while, while walking around an already deconstructed environment. Every crack in this matrix is a metaphor, a deja vu of something not being precisely how it should be, because, because it already exists in the future that devastates every possibility, ruins, so much ruins. Who ruins the ruins and can you hear this child crying outside my window? What remains when ruins are ruined? How to see the world as a phoenix or a kombucha? How to embrace the possibility of humanity's reincarnation? Or are we just listening to some sort of a great explosion that caused the creation of everything? Oh no, I skipped the line. Or are we just listening to some sort of a soundscape that was already composed in the moment of the Big Bang? The great explosion that caused the creation of everything. We must not doubt the creators of infinite possibilities. Who is to blame for the things being fucked up? Because we have no apparent subject there. Of course, it's not God's. We blame ourselves. And power nowadays is heavily redistributed. And for tonight, this might be enough. And I know that tomorrow is another day so different than the previous one. Even the states that we are in sometimes just disappear. They are eaten by the mouth of night, night, ruthlessly expressed in dreams that we forget. To be reborn in the morning requires a strong coffee and a decision. To be in another place requires means of transportation. To be reborn in the morning requires a strong coffee and a decision. To be in another place requires means of transportation. For hours less than a day we have spent in transition. Without being stopped, sometimes only slowly moving. A speed of a motorized snail, one could say with a heavy grimace spreading all over the face. A disgust over lost time. All watches tied closely to our, our wrists so we don't lose track. Almost retracing a dream in this state of in-between. Passing pheromones mixed with mixed feelings about living and coming. As if the veil between the distance from birth and the distance to death has been blown by the wind. Do you ever look at the lines that have been engraved into the palms of your hands? Look at them and wonder which one tells you the truth about your lifespan, your wealth or family matters. Assuming you don't know the precise science, well, science, of reading palms or the precise science, well, science, of atoms and how the cores of them can be blown apart to produce immense energy, heat and photons capable of saving or dooming us. Do you ever ask the taxi driver how his life is? Or what he thinks about while chewing heavily on a chewing gum as a strategy to not fall asleep, to stay awake in the middle of the night because it is his job? 
to do so. What did the truck driver that taught him that trick want to become when he was a kid? Do we forget to dream when reality of our survival hits us hard or bumps us gently and we are so fragile that we are affected by it more than it would be fair for us at a young or even a teenage age. I do not want to sound grumpy or misconcepted about the notion of a dream, a fantasy. We are illusioned more in reality than we are while we sleep. The tendency to remember everything. To learn from your dream. You ask yourself what your dream meant and analyze it. Browsing the web or opening up a book, consulting it with the promise of the revelation of your state of being. Do you ask yourself what your awoken state meant? Do you analyze your day as precisely as you would analyze a dream? Or is that too much to be bothered with? It is easy to skip our own cognition, to dismiss it. To observe your thoughts is a harsh gesture and it requires a lot of patience. To go through each step that was taken with care and precision, to reconstruct the dreamt of your feelings and mentalities, faces and places, transactions and conversations. Only I, as the subject of this story, have the power to direct my mind, to trace the thoughts that I have and make a way for the ones that make sense, to consolidate meaning in the midst of a cognitive crisis. Or is it a crisis of criticism that is almost banned from the course of the everyday? To feel empathic to yourself, to others to the world. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. But as well, it brings anxiety and some sort of a pressure, wanting always to produce an effect, to impact, to shape, to not let things be how they are. They say, <laughs> and I know it internally as well, that if somebody doesn't want your help, you cannot deliver it to them. Even if you would try and stretch your muscles doing it, the state stays the same when help is not actively received. Did the world ask for help? I think it did. Sometimes it is not language that transmits meaning. Sometimes it's the eyes or the gestures, the perpetual states, the silent cries for help. I hear them. And to react is a proposition. To refuse it would be vile. To help is not a heroic act. It is the responsibility within that calls the action. It is a matter of obeying the impulse and creating meaning out of disillusion. To disillusion the feeling. Only concreteness brings sense to abstraction. Let me say that again. Only concreteness brings sense to abstraction. Only structure allows dynamics. A stable system works. An illusion of stability grants our permission to dance within frames with a mission. It is beautiful to construct something, knowing that it is rather unstable and that with time it will shake and tumble, to lose grips, to lose grip on things, to let metaphors collapse. To allow oneself to lose control and dance. Here, this is not, dance is not merely a physical act. It is, it is an act of resilience. To be able to flow even when everything appears static. The quality that systems and structures pose bring us the illusion of control. But who else than every individual is to question that? To reach a mind state from which the recreation of meaning is possible. To walk in the forest is something I want to dream about. Not to escape the reality of my daily life, but to remember that myself once was a tree. 
with longevity embedded in my channels, resisting weather conditions and embracing precarity of states, even if cut down, remain in dignity. Seeds spread all over, kilometers around me, seeing higher than my own limited height, communication, symbiosis with others underground. Under my bark and everywhere around, tiny, little, microscopic creatures found. Whispering stories of past and the present because the future does not exist if you do not anticipate it. What did I dream about as I was a tree? Mm, to have hands, to caress reality, to have effect immediately, to be slow. To be slow is an asset. To be able to run faster sometimes help. But mostly, I think it's about finding time when it is the right time. And wrong time never comes. It all just depends on how we interpret it. <clears throat> Silence became more apparent. This was its main effect, but not a predetermined objective. A completely subjective perspective from my side, my upwards tilted head observing the fury of light emitted from the top of the castle hill. Somebody said that they were saving money this time, which meant that the spectacle in itself was not satisfactory. Or does it depend on the emotional state of the individual who observed? This compulsory excitement and the anticipation of another Big Bang, almost, a sudden renewal of humanity generated by the shift of time. As if it could change the state of an individual suddenly and completely, erasing the well before and immediately ready for the new. Is that the reality of our existence or just a good excuse to turn excitement into a get-together and a simulation of this Big Bang creative possibility. A mere simulation. The light and the sound are there, but everything else, the creation, the outburst of energy, the unexpected collision of particles, maybe a New Year's kiss. More things that happen in this big event, the biggest event that I do not know anything about, except the fact that it happened. At least that was what I was taught to believe. It's either God or the Big Bang, right? We need the explanation of for our being to be at least a little bit more materialized. So suddenly, 10, 9, 8, 7, It breaks, and it bangs. The skies get torn apart by chemically produced means. The throw of money in the air tranquilizes, tranquilize your pets and children, please. For the initial time, it is wild as if Thor, the god, would cough and wind would spread it on all sides. The war has encompassed our position. We are captured. The prisoners defeated. We were wrong about being excited. Is this the feeling of war when the bombs start collapsing our futures? Just another mind simulation that you can convince yourself into believing. War was the only thing that we were talking about before and after the commemoration of the passing of time happened. It is strange how time be behaves like a phoenix. To grant it permission or say otherwise is not under our jurisdiction. The timekeepers, the clock makers lost their function. Imagine when a sunstorm kills all the motherboards, all the computers. Will the time glitch, grasp a second, extend, perhaps shorten? In a glimpse, all the struggles to keep the time 
ruthlessly disabled. Time finally unleashed. When the eye gets used to flashing lights, the ears hear better. The surrounding flashes have calmed down, invisible as before. They have decorated the sky and shortly after erased their existence forever. The silence becomes more apparent. The distinction of a separate bang or boom articulated, keeping written busy, being transposed, adjusted by surrounding architecture that doubles the effects of the blast, echo creating dance as a consequence. It is an odd situation, perceived retrospectively. To dance to fireworks, with closed eyes and silence all around, thinking about war. How I learned how to move. In the evening, it was said to me that no focus should be given to how my body looks like when it's moving, to reside in my body and be it, to embody mind, however it is. I was breathing and I was set to move with my breath. I started shaking, being shocked by electricity of fear. Each time my body touched someone else, eyes closed, ground, ground. Before I went to bed, I turned to all four sides of the sky approximately and asked myself, other beings, nature and something else I cannot recall to grant me restfulness and calm. I dreamt about being on a courtyard filled with people of no particular kind. I was challenged to dance with someone else, eyes closed. They were holding a long stick on one end and myself on the other end. I was afraid. I was afraid to let it fall. They said, do not try. The movement is within you already. I moved as if there was no gravity, surprised myself and everywhere, everyone around. When I opened my eyes, they were all strangers and I was true to myself. In the early morning, woken by decision, quick ignition, night sensation, rave, a sweaty dungeon of mystery because each one is moving exactly how they want to. It is beautiful to wake up with movement. It works better than coffee. My body remembered its lightness and its possibility of subconscious movement, boundless ways of expressing content. Here, it was not anymore about letting go. It was about observing what the body is doing by itself, for itself. It is joyful to be present. Usually on the edge of being awake, I come across a feeling of revelation, a sensation that makes me believe that I have figured out something that I have never thought of before. It drifts away, becomes in an instant demanded by the day that takes it. If I try too much to catch the thought, it moves away from the possibility of being perceived even more. I feel the distance growing. During the day, I sometimes remember little parts of it, at moments when I least expect it, when my imagination gets fired by the associations that my mind freely makes and I can observe them. Today morning I had one, intangible. It was something concerning the trees. The first thing I see each time I wake up are bare branches moving in the unpredictable pace of the wind, as if they are dancing for the ones that notice them. It was something concerning sensory experience on earth, as if trees could be her sensors, collecting information from the environment, an intricate network of sensibility that no science will ever be able to fully understand. My cilial structure cons connecting trees to the core of our planet. Their roots reaching to the liquid state of the center. Information getting melted into magma. 
when an overload occurs, a sudden eruption of a volcano somewhere on the surface appears. Too much information. The harsh facts of the life on the surface, the damage that the trees suffer, the air pollution, the toxicity of our species, everything, everything culminates in a burst. Energy that cannot be contained anymore. It is a vicious cycle, you know. A volcanic eruption produces more smoke, fire and devastation. Catastrophe gets packed into sensory information and again, trees are the ones that carry it to the core. It is a loop that causes oscillation, an outburst. In the same way, I could say, humans function. Collecting data, storing it somewhere inside of our non-material core filling up our capacities to the maximum. When a threshold is reached, there must be a way to release this potential, in a form of anger, of a scream that stems the silence of ignorance, in a shape of a movement, of a breath that is no longer contained, in arts as a culmination of ideas that get expressed, in a conversation that uses language or not. When the release does not happen, humans feel this potential piling up in our chests. It is noticeable by tremor, by bags under eyes, pale skin, slow movement, walking without a set direction, words that do not articulate, they mumble out confusion and error. Imagine, if this would be happening to our planet, how strong would the next outburst of a volcano be? and how devastating this state of not being able to release actually is. Dinner on Monday. The first bite of a divine sweet potato. A sensation so strong, I feel my neurons fired up, data traveling through my internal network, as if novelty would ignite a whole other protocol of sensory experience. I try to feel it, to grasp, not to comprehend, not to realize or understand. I try merely to experience the sensation in all of its possibility. The sensation of a divine sweet potato, nicely baked. Lacking the substance, the ground for comparison is poor. No stable connections concerning pleasure in this domain. Not even pain prevailed too much in my experience, to be honest. Only one time I could say that I got to the point in feeling where sensation really melted my being. I was high on psychedelics and a bee had stung me. The beauty of intensity. Pain turning into pleasure. Venom of the insect fast in traveling across my body. I could feel every cell, the pulse of time pounding under my skin. My whole being was nothing but this experience of intensity. And I want it again. Is pleasure just a chemically induced sensation? Internally produced hormones in our body permit us to feel. I want to train my body to turn the processes that I'm not aware of into something that I can control. What if you could dose happiness or love in regard to your decisions on experience? Maybe it is better that we cannot. Then, otherwise pleasure would make no sense. Who would choose pain if pleasure would be always available? A suffering poet that needs it as inspiration for their work. Intensity is the one that governs actions. I would like to dissect the notions, the terms of emotions that we are using here. I want to... I would like to dissect the notions, the terms of emotions that we are using. What does it really mean to be happy? Sad, angry, confused, ah, afraid. What does it mean to you personally? Not one experience of life can be the same, of course, similarities. Of course, we have to reduce sensation in order to be able to talk about it, to communicate it to others. But by this, 
we also lose our inherent human ability of empathy, sensing intuitively how someone is feeling. This question of, how are you, became a substitute for the activation of our senses. If we could truly rely on how we intuitively know what's up and how someone is really feeling, even if they are trying to hide their emotion or actively not speak about it, communication, and therefore Therefore, relation would function differently. I wish we would be more sensible to each other, to ourselves. I wish I would be, at least. Everything I state comes from an internal need. The lack of sensibility of high quality, good definition sensory experience. I would wish to experience love to fall, to ride on the wave of sensory stimuli. Not driving me mad, but driving my inspiration. That's a big difference. My thresholds for stress are up somewhere in the sky. I can't reach anymore the moment in intensity of working or doing that would bring me to doubt, crash or stop. I have trained myself to be endurable, to sustain focus and execute. Dopamine is then booming in my system in a way I like it. I have not ever reached the threshold of love, nor the break that happens after some time when the fall appears to be painful. So relatable it is though, as if I can imagine every little speck of the sensation as if it already happened in its entirety to me. Am I an idealist if I think that love can be greater than how I experienced it so far? Emotion not being singular. Definitions vary. How each one of us feels is specific and with no possibility of it being generalized. All that is left is speculation and hope. I decided to regard emotion differently. <clears throat> to not be satisfied with one term, the first one that pops up, to not grant my rational mind to deprive emotion from its complexity by pinning it down to a commonly understood misconception. I decided that not even multiplicity of terms work well enough. Combinations of emotions are unarticulable as well, therefore unrelatable. I believe emotion, instead of a horizontal scale between options of terms, could be, they could be perceived on the premises of intensity, and therefore would you prefer to feel the high intensity of emotions in their complex plurality, normal getting by level, or apathy, aka the absence of emotion as the absolute zero, the stagnating point. What would happen when you notice the variable of time, when you introduce the variable of time into the scope? To wish for high intensity must naturally be balanced out with a rest from it, eventually. To wish high intensity of one emotion gets balanced with another emotion with time, a fluctuation, a constant changing, sometimes more noticeable, sometimes more bearable than other times. How we communicate about emotion does not have to follow simple rules of terms that we choose from. Being empathic, using metaphors while speaking on how we are, simply gazing in the eyes of another sometimes unravels more. Core, the world has fallen apart right in front of us. Being the observer, we feel the dust particles moving upwards, as they will have something to look forward to. Searching for the last grips of air molecule, molecules to connect to before disappearing. The vast slowness of movement makes us release captured raindrops faster. A gap in the chest that was lingering under. It became almost a habit to perceive it. It almost turned into nothingness of emotion. In our youth, a cry about it. Suffering in stillness that we know 
too much to ever miss it. Anger rising from the sensation that there is nothing that we could do for the world around or for ourselves. Motionless we are, encapsulated in stone, waiting, waiting, waiting to empower ourselves. We believe it will not take long. Unscripted and profound. Chasing me while I still sleep, pushing a knife in between the gaps of my fingers. In a moment everything could happen. I am anticipating the fall and already my teeth have fallen out at least once in my life. I am observing you from close. You pretend that you did, don't notice but a grimace was made without awareness. Now we have laid down the foundations to be friends. Splendid how we met in my dreams and then forgot all about it. Rigor. I have lost all of my possessions. In a process of searching for them, I have found out something about myself. I always lose everything that I actually do not need. Then I stopped searching. I should consider time searching for something else. Like a spine broken snakes. You fired a missile directly into my window. It pierced, it pierced my silence. My rest was disturbed, how dare you. Now I have to pick up all the pieces of broken glass I will never forget. Without knowing who exactly you are, or whose puppet you are, or whose orders you are obeying. This trust, trust in the custom. Yes, yes, yes. I am moving into your direction. You see me, don't you? A conversation waiting in the cloud of hot air that meets freezing atmosphere. Share with me your thoughts, or our situation does not have any meaning for me. I am anxious to know more about my speculation of you, unraveling the mystery. You gently give in, it had took so much time, I wondered when it would happen. Starting to talk. More and more, saying hundreds of words without blinking. At high, at, high, at high speed. Finally, you allow yourself to speak. You haven't done it for a long while. How do I feel? You ask. Betrayed. I wish that secrets and truths of who you are would uh, come like mist in the mornings. I wish, like, I feel like the sun has blinded me and I cannot keep up. All the good things in life stand up in the quicksand. It might change your modality of time. Brush yourself. Movement begin anywhere on the map. Psychology of movement through time. I wish that in my mind the axis X, Y, Z would not constantly force me to move linearly. How to disappear completely. In the middle of my cognition is a shadow that is afraid of me. Each time I want to approach it, it disappears. Untangible motion. It makes, is made out of the same substance as that forgotten conversation from three years ago. I kind of remember it. But this conversation somehow subconsciously changed everything. And we are supposed to be aware of it. You know, <laughs> I want to smoke dried leaves of trees in the autumn, the ones that lay on the ground, to give them another chance of reaching the sky. If the sky ever was an option for me, I refused it with my fear of heights. I think it should be the shadow in the middle of my cognition, the fear that is avoiding me, turning its face away. It is just a phase, they say. Everything will change when you grow up. There is no monsters under your bed. They are, <laughs> they are everywhere around. <laughs> mm, facing the shadow that is facing the other direction. Friction without faces. How to produce a constructive conversation. We are not running out of time. Actually, we have plenty of it. Almost infinite, one could say, if we consider the life of my body and your body from a post-anthropocentric perspective. 
Could I be more eternal than the fear that conditions my existence? More physical than my own perception? I would want to rest for a moment. Without the shadow comfortably, comfortably sitting on my chest. To breathe easy seems to be a challenge. Avoid trines. I would like to propose a different narrative to our communication logic. Something more tangible. Could we speak of the past only without mentioning our presence in the now or our imagination of the future? As an exercise to see how everything is in reality interconnected. Do you think? Do you think the wind blows from the past towards the future? I wanted to put a blindfold on my eyes to see better what was happening inside. Not to be distracted by the presence so much. I can barely, I can barely touch the re references of my lineage. Slippery slime all over my hands. Why does my cognition change so much day to day? Even if I would want things to be more stable, this, they disintegrate from being such. Chasing associations, no matter the conditions of surroundings. In a crowded street, I feel more lonely as an observer of how everybody was moving in time. I mean, before they reached this position in space, a previous one occurred. Could I ever grasp how somebody felt a few moments ago when they were out of my zone of sight? What was the last interaction of a stranger that locks eyes with me for a little longer than it is acceptable? It was interesting though. I think we both got a glimpse of not being ready for observation. A postman and a lady in a night robe, a robber and a cat. A lover and the nightfall, whispering truth that is rarely articulated, is hard work, void path. Before I could speak, I would mumble and suppose that everybody always understood me. I was perplexed by their incapability of translating my meaning into theirs. How their breathing changed when they couldn't grasp my existence when they would for hours and hours just stand there around me with their eyes and mouths wide open, astonished by the fact, by the very fact of existence existing. I was the messenger. In a way they could always perceive more than it was necessary and mostly not the things that were crucial to me. As if I was lost in a forest and the trees would put roots exactly where my feet were going. Am I not a tree? You know what happens when expectations do not get realized. Travai of detachment. Big rock was created for us to climb it, the mountain. As we are struggling to get across an obstacle, we like to forget that it was placed there for a reason. When we change the altitudes of our beings, we gain perspective. Before the brain constructs an image, the world is upside down. <laughs> Without being upset, we believe that our perception is right. Without conducting a heavy research on the topic, we believe that weight is unchangeable, always the same that we as humanity have it all figured out. The end of grief. Leaning onto your back, it feels as if it was movements doubled. Each cell on the surface of your skin wrapping our internalities have started to exchange heat and data. Communication can happen under non-linguistic terms. You tell me that there is something familiar about how the curve of our realities fit together. Similar with what, I ask. You look at the space in front of you, distracted by your own thoughts. I, I never get a concrete answer, but I know it anyways. Play. This time I will be brief. I have no time to lose words. If I could tell everything that I have to tell, I think I would stop speaking forever. Everything. 
everything keeps everything. Dropping mannequins, harsh wind, conditions of existence, my condition, people send around, somebody helps, switching the situation around completely, the wind stops, I jump outside of the puddle of my own condition. I would imagine it all go differently. Pass by, a fast train, sliding through silence, cutting open the slits of words that didn't manage to transcribe meanings into minds of others. Or like us, perceivable to connection, breathing temper of skyscrapers, foundations so solid, nobody ever looks at their bottoms, only gazing upwards, seeing how their, the bright light that is captured inside still shines through the square windows at night. Nobody wants to leave their comfort, to be faced with an excavation of foundations, especially if the promise of change is apparently situated somewhere along the infinite doors of offices, a bureaucratic mechanic wheel that gets steered in specific direction. No one in particular steals it. We all do. Participating in the generation of specificity, in constant generalization of commons, of truths, opinions. Brackets of time that are well defined, sometimes better than we can imagine them to be. Wishing that we speak the same language. There is never time for colistula. There is never time for the consolidation of difference. Wishing that we speak the same language while our words hit misunderstanding. You are a mystery to me. Negotiating, negotiating meaning happens only in interpersonal strategies of conviviality. If you don't know what gentrification actually means or what anarchy is, looking around you and browsing Wikipedia, talking to others would do your job of becoming knowledgeable. To be genuinely interested for the existence of another is a parallel scope of the interest on yourself. The interest that partakes its exploration well beyond the known or the satisfactory. Bravery is heavily involved in this process of questioning. When answers arise, some sort of relief might frown upon our festivities. Change is the only constant and everything else is a variable. Time? Time moves slow if you want it. If you don't care about it, it flies before you can even observe it. A close-up of a moment could reveal anything you have always been searching for. It was there all the time. Just the bare incapability of acknowledgement or the anticipation of a certain condition. A mindset striving towards something that is other. All factors of prevention. Elements in the equation that do not work while you walk barefoot on sharp rocks. And there is no step that you can overlook, because pain is painful, and instinctively, as a human being, as any other, you want to preserve your well-being by nurturing attention. What if the urgency of preservation would expand over the territory of your own body that finishes with your skin? Not only the post-anthropocentric microbiotic expenditure, here I want to propose also the sensory, the environment, the other, others, the time in all of its dimensions, a thought, a memory, a sensation, expanding us into a story, an outline, a touch, a sound, the rustle, the trembling, all of that and not less than infinitely more.
the urgency of preservation expanded into infinitude. Where it does not lay, it fights. I call on you, I call on to you, all the shattered atoms that belong to my body, those who have escaped my proximity, I'll, I call on to you. I invite you back to rejoin the hole that fills the missing part so badly it hardly breathes. I know you didn't want to escape my space, it just happened, suddenly drifted away, just being pulled by some force, not gravity, maybe greed. I was greedy, not grateful, took everything for granted. What is wrong? My mind wants to pose this question. What is wrong with our connection? How to come, when, we, what, talk. There are moments of, I find being completely and others do not. Did they dream too much? In my night a dream their place feeling being born just like that on the floor of our conversation in the very possibility of connection. When it was so much apparent that I'm the only variable transferred to my own cognitive capacities. I am stopping to make sense. I am stopping to make sense. I want to live in this abstraction, not obstruction, destruction of distraction. I want to live in this abstraction. No obstruction, destruction of distraction. I would like to flow somehow, just reside in this eternal flux created in the moment of the Big Bang. It is wonderful how we don't have control over our bodies and thoughts to let go, to yeah, observe silently from the last row what is happening. I call onto you lost atoms, quantum particles. Fly back onto me, fill me anew, make me whole, or heal fast, my dear body. I cannot wait. I have just decided that I am fit for this day. I don't need to transcribe it differently onto another substance. How I am right here and now to accept the state, the atoms, the missing atoms will find their way back around. Why the mind is scattered, it gets too much input to reclaim it now and at this very moment, to fill yourself up with imagination. This is a prayer. If anyone is reading this, it shouldn't be mentioned to anyone else. You know, <laughs> the feeling, you know the feeling as well. This description is about fragmentation when meaning gets shattered. But we were all taught to read in between the lines, weren't we? I want to think about birds and how they can fly in formations and sing, each one for herself and all together for everyone else. Is there enjoyment in being a bird? Or just momentary satisfaction when you go with the wind so gently you barely notice it? I am the river and you are the sea. There is a current in me, something like electricity, competing with paragraphs, words binding me, researching the stress surrounding me. And I'm, am I a surrogate, an exchangeable body? I am my own atoms and their absence, a meeting point of references. The moment of opening eyes, closing eyes, when I wake up, I wish to see a smile internally. Not a misconception, not a skipped breath or heat for no apparent reason. Dig it up, fragmentarily, 